The interior of the house is rectangular in shape and divided into two parts at a point two-thirds of the way along its length by a small open-work wall half as high as the house. The larger of the two parts, some 50 centimeters higher and covered with a layer of black clay and cow dung, which the women polish, is reserved for human use. The smaller part, paved with flagstones, is occupied by the animals. A door with two wings gives access to both rooms. On top of the dividing wall are kept, at one end, the small earthenware jars or esparto grass baskets used to store the provisions kept for immediate consumption, such as figs, flour, and leguminous plants, and at the other end, near the door, the water jars. Above the stable is a loft where next to all kinds of tools and implements, quantities of hay and straw to be used as animal fodder are piled up. Against the gable wall stands a brickwork construction, in the recesses and holes of which the kitchen utensils, the ladle, the cooking pot, the dish used to cook wheat cake, and other earthenware objects blackened by the fire, are kept, and at each end of which are placed large jars filled with grain. In front of this construction is the fireplace, a circular hollow three or four centimeters deep at its center, around which, arranged in a triangle, are three large stones to hold the cooking utensils. In front of the wall opposite the door, generally referred to by the same name as the outside wall that is seen from the rear courtyard, or else called the weaving loom wall, or the facing wall, if one faces it on entering, stands the weaving loom. The opposite wall where the door is, is called the wall of darkness, or the wall of sleep, of the maiden, or of the tomb. A bench wide enough for a mat to be spread out on it is set against this wall. This is the place set aside for the festal sheep or small calf, sometimes for the wood or the water pitcher. Clothes, mats, and blankets are hung, in the daytime, on a peg or a wooden crossbar next to the wall of darkness, or else they are put under the dividing bench. Thus, the canoon wall is opposed to the stable as the high to the low, and the loom wall is opposed to the door wall as the light to the dark. One might be tempted to give a purely technical explanation of these oppositions, since the loom wall facing the door, which itself faces east, is the most brightly lit, and the stable is indeed at a lower level than the rest, the house usually being built at right angles to the contour lines to facilitate the drainage of animal waste and dirty water. However, a number of indices suggest that these oppositions are the center of a cluster of parallel oppositions, the necessity of which never stems directly from technical imperatives and functional requirements. The habitus allows us both to think that we have chosen what is necessary to us and to think that what we have learned is actually natural to us. When this transformation determines our modes of living in the general area of taste, as well as the specific area of aesthetic taste, it allows us to misinterpret acquired tastes as primary experiential preferences. <laughs> 